Okay. <laughs> so since I'm vlogging while driving today, it's only fitting for me to share this first. So the other night, I think it was yesterday, uh, it was late at night and my phone was jingling. So I had a comment on my, um, I'm, you're not ready for this jelly vlog video where I'm driving. And someone had put something along the lines of, now I forgot exactly what it was, but it was something like, um, next time you're going to vlog while driving, why don't you hit something or why don't you like, it, I don't know if it said get in a wreck, but it was something along those lines. Um, so it's not so boring, but anyway, yes, it was awful and I should have been totally offended, but I was howling laughing. I don't like those kind of nasty comments make me laugh when people like are witty or are funny about it. You know, when you just say your voice is annoying. Oh, ouch. Ooh, got me, you know, but never mind. So anyway, I commented back and said, you know, I should be offended right now, but you just made me laugh out loud. So thank you. And they never replied back, but I don't know. I just thought that was funny. Okay. So this is a really funny story too. Well, I think it's funny. I don't know if you're going to think it's funny, but I, you yeah. know, all right. So the other night, and you'll have to, I don't know if I, I don't think I posted it on my Lola Facebook page. I'll have to post a picture. So I went out to dinner with um, one of my besties and we were at this restaurant and they have these really tall booths so you can't see, you know, who's behind you. Well, I had a margarita and I laugh loud anyway, but I'm howling, laughing because I, I can't share what we were talking about, but it was hilarious. So we're laughing, laughing, laughing and all of a sudden I hear... Quit cackling over there, y'all. Yeah. What? I look over and my dad and my sister and one of my cousins were in the booth behind us and they heard me cackling. Apparently I cackle, which I don't think I do. But, so anyway, so they, after they left, I texted my dad and said, you know, are you gonna play cards tonight? Because when my cousin's in town, they always play cards. He said, no, we're playing croquet under the lights. Like, what is croquet under the lights? He said, well, come on over. All right, I don't know if you've ever pl played croquet, but it's huge in our family. We, we love it. My parents have a really big front yard, so we set up the whole, what's it called, field? I don't know, and we, we love it. So I go over there thinking, how in the heck are they playing croquet in the dark? There's no way. So I get there. Okay, there are three cars parked up the hill, like shining into my parents' driveway, headlights on, brights on to light up their front yard to play croquet. Because at this time it's eight o'clock at night. I mean, it's dark. So I pull up my car at the top of the hill, shine my car down. So my dad and my cousin and I are all playing croquet. Well, we keep playing and I pasted them the first two times, by the way, thank you very much. And so of course they wanted a rematch because there's no way that, you know, I could win I could beat them. So we play again. Well, this has been like an hour. Well, all of a sudden, one of the cars, like the lights start to flicker. Lights go off. I'm like, oh no. Sure enough, my cousin runs down to his car. It won't start. Battery's dead on his car. So I'm thinking, my battery's a piece of crap. I run up to my car. My car won't start either. So we have my dad's truck is the only light and he's the only car that's still running. So we finish playing. We have to jump start three of the cars. All right, it was hilarious, but it was so worth it. It was so fun, but now we know, you know, you can only play croquet on headlights for about 45 minutes before the cars die. I'm surprised the neighbors didn't come over or nobody was wondering what the heck is going on. All right, so leading into my next story, I had to tell that story. So when I was playing, I had on, I had these pair of express jeans that have holes everywhere and I wear them all the time and they're tight. So if I move my leg, you know, they rip because they're so tight. Anyway, so the strings are falling off everywhere. Well, I get home and on my left leg, there's a huge hole like on my thigh and my knee area. So I got inside and the lights were off. There was just like a small um, table lamp on and I saw like a pile of string on my knee. So I reached down to grab I really want to look at the camera right now to tell you this story, but I'm focusing ahead. So I reached down to grab the string off of my knee, but when I went to grab it, it jumped, okay? The string 
fucking jumped. So I, like, what the heck is going on? Thinking it just, you know, fell off. I looked down. It was a toad, okay? It was a freaking, I almost said the other word, toad. It was one of those tiny, uh, okay, seriously, am I, do I have high? Seriously, I feel like I'm getting hives already. Oh my God. I screamed so loud that my neighbor across the street was having like a little get together or something, stuck his head out the front door. That's how loud I screamed, which obviously he wasn't too concerned because he didn't come over to make sure that I was okay. Oh my God. Okay. So my first thought is, holy shit, this is a toad. And if you've watched, if you watched my weird freaky questions tag, you know that I, my phobia is of toads. Otherwise, if you haven't watched it, you're probably thinking, why do you care about a toad? I hate toads. So I, oh my God, now I'm in panic mode because how am I supposed to get rid of this toad? If this was outside, I would have just run inside and locked my door. Well, I can't do that because now it is in my house. The toad is in my house. I'm freaking out because, you know, like part of me is thinking, oh my God, let me just, I'll go to my parents' house. Uh, the toad will stay in my house and I will never come home again. And then I'm thinking, no, I can't get a hold of yourself. So I get my shoes. Thank God I had on flats because, you know, I can't smash the toad. So I had on my flats. So I went to scoop up the toad. Well, my dog, okay, is obsessed. Like he chases flies. It's kind of ridiculous. But so he's, you know, trying to attack this toad. I'm freaking out because if he attacks the toad, that means he's going to start having foaming at the mouth. And then I have to clean up the dead toad. Holy cow. So I scoop up the toad. I'm still screaming. I'm squeezing my shoes so hard so that this, I'm a terrified laugh that this toad is going to sneak through, you know, the space and hop on me. So I run outside, I literally swing open the front door, run on my porch, take my shoes with the toad inside and yes, I'm driving with no hands, okay, sue me. Throw my shoes in the front yard and run inside. And I went and got them the next morning because there was no way, it was dark, there's no way I was gonna take a chance of those toad, that toad still being in my sand or in my shoes when I brought it inside. So who does that happen to? Honestly, who, how, what? How did the toad even, when did the toad get on me? Had it been on me that whole time? I mean, there's no way because I would have been standing and then sitting in my car. I don't know how it happened and it, it's horrifying. And it was one of the worst experiences of my life, but I wish I could have had it on camera. That's when I wish I had a reality show because seriously, it was hilarious.